Hello everyone, welcome to a C++ tutorial. Today I'll be talking about functions that you need to include if you're in classes, if the class deals with uh, resources that are kept in dynamic memory. Colloquially, these, term, these functions are referred to as the big three, and they solve two big problems for us. The first problem is the problem of memory leaks. Dynamic memory objects that are created in the class uh, need to be deleted at the end to avoid memory leaks. Um, and the way we do that is by using a destructor. And we'll take an, a look at an example of one right now. So here's our destructor. And it quite simply uh, deletes the content and more content, which are our uh, private uh, resources that are kept in dynamic memory, as we can see from the constructor. Um, the way a destructor works is that right as the variable is, or not the variable, sorry, the class object is passed out of scope or it is um, deleted itself, uh, it runs. So it's the last thing that'll happen with this class object. So basically at the very last second, we'll delete content and more content to make sure that they don't, uh, they don't leak. And so that is a good uh, solution to that problem. So uh, the second problem that it'll solve for us is what I refer to as the problem of shallow versus deep copies. And I've created this visual guide to help uh, demonstrate what these are and why we should care. So if we've got this code in C++, int x equals zero and int y equals x, uh, what it doesn't do is create a situation like this, where x and y uh, both contain the same zero. What it does do is it creates uh, a separate zero for y to hold. Uh, these are equivalent uh, yet distinct. So we can mess with one without changing the other, which is what we want. Uh, when this is applied to pointers, however, uh, it takes a copy of the pointer, but the pointer will contain the same memory address and thus point to the same object in dynamic memory, which is a problem. This is a shallow copy. And the problem with this is that if we create, now we have two class objects of the same type, but if we change this object in one of them, it'll mess with it in the other. So what we want instead is what's referred to as a deep copy, where you get a different pointer to a different memory address uh, that contains a distinct copy of the object. That way we can mess with either one of these and it will not you know, mess with the other and cause us problems. So how we achieve this in code is using the, the other two of the big three, the copy constructor and the and a custom impl implementation of the assignment operator. They're both custom implementations because these have default implementations, but the default is to do a shallow copy. So we're going to take another look. Um, so this is our copy constructor. Uh, the way it works is it's structured like the other constructor, but it takes in the reference to the original. Now it can't take in the original itself because if we pass it by value, it will attempt to copy that into the this variable called original. And its way of doing that will be with a, by calling the copy constructor itself, which will then try to create its own original variable uh, to use in the constructor. Um, but it'll need, in order to do that, it it's the second iteration of it will need to call the constructor a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time until the program crashes. So we can avoid that by passing it by reference. So that's what we do. And then we create new dynamic objects for our new, uh, for our new class object. And then we copy the content of those dynamic objects over like this. That way we have two distinct sets of the same, you know, two like identical distinct objects uh, two identical distinct sets of objects for our uh, each of our class objects. So that's how a copy constructor is structured uh, to make deep copies. And then we move on to the assignment operator. So the first thing that we need to do in order to avoid a memory leak, we need to delete the old resources. 
Uh, if we don't, and we just switch our pointers over and point at the new resources, we are going to not be able to delete these guys at any point in the future because we won't have a pointer that points to them and they will leak. So we make sure the first thing we do, delete them. And then this next part is exactly the same as the copy constructor. We make new objects, we fill those with, we copy the actual data over. Then as is convention with assignment operators, um, we return the left-hand side. So we it implicitly, using the operator, uh, takes in the left-hand side, and then we uh, take in the, the right-hand side. So in order to do that, we have the, the data type of the left-hand side, which is a reference to our example object, and we return the reference to the left-hand side specifically. Um, why do we do this? This is so that these assignments can be statements can be embedded in larger statements. Uh, you never really have to do this. You can just put this part like above and then do the rest of the statement below. I think that looks a lot cleaner, but that is actually the convention in C++. Um, it works with integers, doubles, uh, characters, uh, booleans. Always uh, it returns the left-hand side. So in order to keep this convention going, we, we make sure that we do this. Um, so yeah, uh, one last thing to notice is that in both of these structures, we rely on this assignment operator. This is actually the assignment operator for this dynamic object class, which is the, the stuff that we contain. So we, this is just another example of why this stuff is so important, because we implicitly assume that the assignment operator is going to work the way we think it does. Um, so we just need to, whenever we're uh, working with that, we, we make sure that that is the case for the future. All right, so I hope that has enhanced your understanding of the big three, uh, why they're so important to include in your classes, uh, and um, good luck in creating your own class objects in the future.